welcome to our community policing task force meeting. This is our third meeting and um, just a little bit of recap. So this will really be a recap meeting um, for the new people that just joined us. We broke out into specific task force. So we have an education group that really focuses on public service announcements, working with parents and working with um, students. And then we have a um, gang intervention or prevention group that's really focused on um, meeting the needs of our young men. And so they broke out to create a Big Brothers program. And so they, everyone has met over the last um, few weeks that we were apart, and I want to have each group come up and report the status of their initiatives. And before we get started with that, I want to just have a few brief updates um, just for information throughout the city. Um, I'm going to bring our city attorney up first and have him to provide an update of the municipal ordinances that are currently being put into place to deter and to prevent prostitution on Long Beach Boulevard. Come on up, Mr. City Attorney. Thank you for coming. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, to our elected officials, mayor, board member Zarita, our stakeholders. It's a pleasure for me to be here. My chief deputy took the first two meetings and I'm glad to be able to make this one. Um, the focus in my office for the past uh, several months has been the issues with Long Beach Boulevard. And last um, couple weeks ago we prepared an ordinance for city council, which got it adopted, and we're in the waiting period, um, that deals with the hotels um, requiring that they have their regis uh, registration rolls available for inspection upon request. Um, it prohibits the hourly uh, rental of the rooms, and um, it reaches out to that industry to make them more of a, a team player in our fight against prostitution. Um, our older motels have the same restrictions in their conditional use permits, so we were protected um, to that extent. But this was a um, city, city statement that if you're even considering um, trying to establish such a business in Compton, you're going to have these, these requirements. Uh, as you know, if you've been following the city council agendas, there's one uh, motel in particular that's uh, scheduled to come before council uh, to discuss their conditional use permit and their uh, activities as it relates to uh, Long Beach Boulevard. Um, we're also, I've been meeting with the sheriffs weekly. Um, our communications have never been, been better. And we are focusing efforts on Long Beach Boulevard. And it is our hope we are starting to make a difference. And I think we are. Another issue that's uh, come to my attention in the last few weeks has been marijuana dispensaries. Uh, years ago, City Council made a, sta made a statement that they are prohibited in the City of Compton. And we, we, we've done that under our powers, uh, under our zoning powers, uh, regardless of the state um, propositions uh, on the matter. But it's come to uh, my attention that we still have uh, entities thinking that they can establish a stronghold uh, in the community, uh, whether they have a state dispensary card and they think that's enough, or they have no authorization at all and they're just um, thumbing their nose at law enforcement. I don't know which is which. But I have a meeting scheduled next Tuesday with the head of the district attorney's office for the Compton branch and the captain of the sheriff's department um, to discuss ways uh, to enforce this issue, not only as a misdemeanor, which is on our books, the Compton Municipal Code, but also as a felony. Uh, because we cannot have situations where uh, the laws in our books are not being um, followed. So, so those are the two 
Um, we're just going to continue with Long Beach Boulevard and, and human trafficking and prostitution issues. And we're bringing up these uh, marijuana dispensaries. Um, and that's our focus along with our general activities of uh, misdemeanor prosecutions under the Compton Municipal Code and the uh, few issues that the city has um, that our office addresses. So thank you for your time. I'm looking forward to participating in the groups. And let's have a great meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And before I call the Sheriff's Department up for an update, um, we, they're going to give a quick update on the Town Sheriff Program and then also some information regarding some of the um, current schemes that we have in place um, to combat prosecution. So just a quick recap, the school police um, partnered with the Sheriff's Department to do a sting um, about a month ago and they apprehended um, several um, young ladies that were um, involved in prostitution but they were actually targeting the um, pimps. And so the Sheriff's Department, they have a special task force that is actually put in place and in my meeting with the captain, that Captain McCray, I learned that this is a new program that they're actually going to be training other units throughout the county. And so this program um, is really special because they have specialized intelligence on the actual pimps, the gangs that they're affiliated with. They know them by name, which um, gang they're coming from. And um, they have a lot of information, and so they're actually able to target um, and get to the root of the issue. Um, for a long time, prostitution was just dealt with by arresting the young ladies, and we know that that does not um, deter demand, and it doesn't, of course, deter the actual activity that's going on. And so we're working um, for the first time with all of our law enforcement agencies. And um, I have a quick update on a meeting that I had this week with the county. We are focusing on how do we make these offenses um, carry more jail time. And when we look at different areas throughout the country that have had prostitution issues, they had to work with the um, federal government and make these felonies actually carry more jail time because what happens is the, the pimp, it's very difficult to um, prosecute a pimp for pandering. And so they usually get only a couple of months or uh, basically not you know years or um, anything that can really stick so it doesn't deter them. And so what we're focusing on is how can we work with the district attorney's office and the federal government to really try these cases at the federal level. So those are some updates that we'll continue to provide, provide you all. And um, if I can have our sheriff's department come on up and get this update. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Deputy Ray Barones, Compton Sheriff Station Community Relations and the Town Sheriff for District 1. Today we will just kind of brief you on the prostitution and what the Sheriff's Department has been doing. We, the, the city was so nice to uh, actually have five more cars added during this time. Uh, I believe that happened in, uh, two months ago, three months ago. And in those cars we were allowed and were able to actually get one car that was specifically focusing in on the prostitution. Now, the Regular patrol deputies go out and they make arrests on the prostitutes, but they don't have enough time to investigate, find out who the pimps are, and begin to work information on the pimps. But this car that was assigned, they were able to do such work. They were able to locate the young ladies and then begin to gather information on the men and women that were pimping them. And then what happens is basically we were able to gather that information and begin to make a headway regarding the pimps. So what we see now is that we are now actually a locking down on the pimps and the prostitutes from a whole other side. So uh, the pimp that could normally, once he loses one girl and she goes to jail, it just brings another one out. We're now hitting from the, the other side where now he or she is now going to be liable for what they are doing. And so that's been working. We've also uh, brought in a unit into the Sheriff's Department to assist us with that. And then also we have cars that are assigned specifically for uh, prostitution. We have, I believe, one car assigned specifically for prostitution. And what we will do is continue to make headways in that way. Now, just because we have the one car doesn't mean that all the other cars won't continue to do what they're doing. That means that everyone will still go out and make arrests. But that one car is assigned to every time some prostitution is taking place, anytime something is going on then that car will get that information and begin to attempt to work that information on a totally different end than just going out, scooping those young ladies up, arresting them for that crime, and then 
uh, they're back out on the street. So that's kind of what's taking place uh, with the prostitution and what's going on in our city. The town sheriff program is off to a great start. We've had three community camp outs. Well, we had two community camp outs, one in the fourth district, one in the third district. We're going to have the second district community camp out uh, this this week coming on the 23rd, and that's going to be at the park on Santa Fe, I believe Oaks in Santa Fe. And what we'll be doing is inviting the community to come out and we're reaching out to the community. We're looking to make headway to say, hey, we are uh, relationable. We want to make relations with everyone in the community. We want to reach out to the community. So we're asking everyone to come out. The reason why we do the community camp out, twofold reason, is so number one, we can let the community know that we're out there and we're uh, wanting to make friends and get block clubs started. And the second one is if there's any crime going on in that area, the community camp out affords us the opportunity to meet people that we don't have block clubs in that area to come out and maybe give us some information during that time just on what's going on in their area. After that, we're going to be starting Business Watch. So the Business Watch program will simply be when we contact the businesses in a specific area, uh, my area will be the Rosecrans and Central areas where I will begin. And so we'll go through all of those areas, inviting the business owners and managers to come out and just hear information on pandering, people hanging out in front of their uh, businesses and their establishments, the loitering, and just how do we deal with those issues, how do we deal with proper lighting to keep their businesses safe, and things of that nature. So we'll be kicking off our business program as well, and then we're reaching out also in each district to the clergy. We know that there's a fourfold cycle, and we know we need the clergy as well as the community, the government, and law enforcement in order to actually raise the community up. So we're going to be raising or reaching out to the community, especially the clergy, to assist us and reaching out to the people so that we can make sure that each and every person is reached within our town sheriff area. So that's a brief update of what we're doing with the sheriff department and the town sheriff area. Remember, if you have a, something that's going on in your area, whether whatever district you're in, you can call your district council person or you can call us, the sheriff department, ask for community relations, and then the information will get disseminated. And so anything as small as uh, people jaywalking to anything large as parties going on all night long. We are here to provide information for quality of life. All right, so just because you don't have shootings going on in your area doesn't mean it's not quality of life. The neighbor that plays his music loud or the television loud is also a quality of life issue. And so we want to address those issues as well and make sure that everyone has an opportunity to live happily in this wonderful city of Compton. Thank you very much, and you guys have a great day. And then also, I just want to remind um, citizens, um, in speaking with the captain, I learned that we have very few citizens that actually report crimes, and we are the lowest in the county in terms of reporting crimes that occur in our community. The same thing with prostitution. We see young ladies walking down the street, um, you know, sometimes very scantily clad, and you know, we sometimes have kids in the car, and I hear parents, and they tell me that, you know, they're outraged, but very few people actually call law enforcement, and we have to make these reports so that we can actually get the response. So I just want to remind everyone, so please, when you see crimes occurring in the community, to report them. And then also, we will, a little bit later on, have some updates on the um, level of homicides, but in summary, in July, um, we had some of the highest um, levels of shootings and homicides in Compton in a very long time. And in August, we um, initiated a community emergency, which meant that the city um, responded with providing additional law enforcement officers on the streets. And um, we also was our first uh, meeting for the community policing task force, which was actually um, planned before then. But in September, we saw um, homicides reduce and then also in October we were at our lowest numbers um, really throughout the whole year and so um, within that time period we had crime drop almost 50 percent and so the efforts of everybody coming together working on one page in the city really working um, collaboratively with our sheriff and then also with our community policing task force people are more aware and they're being more engaged in the community so I just want to provide that um, brief update and then if I could have my breakout Groups. I'll have my education um, group come up first, if you don't mind, to provide your report on your initiatives. <coughs>
Thank you. This is Ms. Thatcher Zarita, Concord Unified School District Board Trustee Member. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Actually, one of my committee members was going to present this morning, but she got stuck in court. So she's going to attempt to get here. But I'll give you a brief summary of uh, what we've accomplished. We had our second meeting, committee meeting yesterday. And we basically, after having a conversation with, with the mayor, uh, our campaigns are all going to be entitled turned down. So it'll be turned down on human trafficking, turned down on gangs, and turned down on drugs. So um, it kind of transcends across the spectrum. So we've agreed that that's what we're going to call our campaigns. Well, our committee is charged with developing an ad campaign to promote awareness regarding human trafficking. The campaign will be comprised of age-appropriate PSAs, posters, assemblies, and a parent brochure. We discussed identifying a specific color to be associated with the Turn Down campaign. Um, we'll include Compton Unified School District, our student board member, as well as other students so they can give us a perspective on uh, the issue of human trafficking. A lot of our students have to take the route on Long Beach Boulevard to get to school, so um, this is something that they are definitely aware of. Um, we've identified um, maybe some Compton Unified School District film students that can attend our future meetings and maybe actually do the taping of the PSAs. Um, we received some good information and um, some resources uh, from the Coalition to Abolish Slavery and um, Trafficking. We developed a project timeline and our target date we expect to roll our our campaign is January 8th, 2014. And our campaign will focus on education, resources, and possibilities. And um, to our dismay, we, we didn't realize that um, January 11th, 2014 is National Human Trafficking Awareness Day. So we, we're right on time. We set a schedule for our future meetings um, for anybody who'd like to attend. I'll just give those very quickly. October 30th, November 13th, November 25th, December 11th, December 18th, and our rollout date, January 8th. Um, each of our members have re received specific assignments. Um, we uh, actually have, from a uh, victim's point of view, uh, a list of things that parents or uh, concerned family members or community members should be looking for. And these um, tips came from young ladies who are in the juvenile justice system. We had a roundtable discussion. We uh, want to ensure that everything we do is translated uh, into Spanish so that um, the Latino population in this community follows our campaign. Uh, we know that we need to focus on legislation that will protect the victims of human trafficking. Because of being recruited by gang members who are perme permeate the community, they're able to actively recruit girls who wouldn't necessarily be victims, but they interact with them on a daily basis and now they're being recruited even if they aren't runaways. Mm -hmm. So our focus again is age appropriate materials on anti-human trafficking, awareness, prevention, intervention, recovery, and resources. So basically I think I've covered uh, what we talked about and we're prepared to meet on the 30th of October to more refine our messages so we can develop the PSAs, the verbiage for the PSAs. So thank you for your attention, and if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer. The meetings that you're speaking about, where are they going to be held? Oh, the meetings? Well, we held our meeting at City Hall yesterday, and uh, folks had a difficult time parking, so I've committed to hold them at the school district where uh, parking is a little more friendly. So. 
they'll be at uh, Camden Unified School District at one of the um, executive boardrooms. Uh, anyone who's interested in attending our meetings, if you give me your contact information, I'll send you an email regarding the time and location for our meetings and, and the information that we've already uh, accomplished. Thank you. And just a quick update um, in terms of the importance of this task force. I was told um, over the weekend that there were pimps actively recruiting young ladies from middle school. And so this is a real issue and we are focusing on making certain that our parents get the information that they need to protect their kids. And um, when we were growing up, I remember the Just Say No campaign. And everybody knew to just say no to drugs. And that's something that we are missing from this generation. And so the Turn Down campaign, that's something that the kids, that's their terminology. They always say, you know, it's turn up or turn down. So we're using their terminology and using it for something that can be um, positive. And so we'll focus on different issues. Um, one part of the campaign will focus on drugs. Another will focus on um, human trafficking and really um, making sure that they have the information that they need because as we know a lot of our kids are targeted through social media so on facebook um, instagram and all the different um, various social media outlets and they're being targeted by other young ladies or other young men so this is something that our parents need to know so that they can be more mindful and then also equip our young people to be um, more on the lookout because they never um, someone doesn't just come up to you and say do you want to be a prostitute they come up to you and they ask you, well, you know, don't you like nice clothes? Don't you like nice things? You know, don't you want to, you know, have someone take care of you? And all this sounds good to them. It's kind of like when you're in, you know, telemarketing or sales, you want to get the yes questions. And so that's how our kids are lured in. And so this campaign will really be about focusing on being proactive. We don't want to always come at the back end and, you know, want to try to get our young ladies out of prostitution because that's heartbreaking. And I've met with parents who live right here in the community and their children have been, um, involved in the sex trade and so that's it's not a game and so we're focusing on making certain that we empower not only the children but also the parents and so we're really excited about this campaign and we're um, focusing on getting the resources in to make certain that it's a citywide affair we want to make certain that these assemblies and these psas are um, blasted throughout the whole media we will have some radio slots we'll make certain that everyone knows what's going on in the city of compton with this and so i want to thank that committee for working diligently and they are um, on track to meet um, the next semester, which I think will be a great kickoff for um, many of our programs that we're working on here today. And so without much ado, I'll bring up our Big Brothers program if we can have someone report from their group. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm happy to announce that the Big Brother program has officially uh, taken off. We had our first meeting yesterday evening at the uh, Youth Activity League. Uh, right here on um, Elm. Um, our meeting comprised of a nice core group of uh, committed individuals and we started quickly uh, accomplishing things. Our goal is to have our first program ready the first week of January. Um, we've already had a name, it's called the SEED program. Um, they will develop what the acronym for it is later, but the, the terminology came from a vision of one of our members and basically because our young men are part of the foundation of our community and they, we, we need to help them grow, cultivate, and develop. Thus, they came up with the need and the name of the SEED program. Um, <clears throat> it will comprise of at least three components. Um, that will be uh, a reading uh, component where we will improve your reading levels through classroom curriculum. It will also be a public speaking component and also a physical activities component. Um, Right now, we're still in the developing stages of finalizing the exact time of day for the block of instruction, how long each one will be. But it also uh, has a curriculum where they will have a chance to have their own input to help have electives. As the program goes on, it'll be a series of uh, eight-week programs. Each uh, component will last eight weeks. And once they complete each program, then they will move on to the next level. And it will start, we'll also have a uniform component where after they've finished a certain block of instruction and we get ready to go out into the business world to prepare them for experience in meeting business people 
talking to big people with a business mindset that they will have what we call an academic uniform or business attire. And our goal is for them to have dress style, soft dress pants like khakis, etc., and a blazer. The blazer will incorporate the seed emblem. We're meeting on the logo at our next meeting, so we'll have the logo and the name and have all that embroidered on there very nicely. They'll be very professional. They will learn how to speak and conduct themselves in the community in a business form for them being ready to go to college or step out into the trade world so that they'll be a positive influence and effect on our community. And right now, our next meeting is scheduled for November 13th. At that time, we'll have our mission statement, our vision statement, and our core curriculum. And the next thing is we need everybody's help for all the possible mentor prospects. We are looking for men to help mentor our young men. And we'd like to keep it to no more than three young men per mentor. So that means we really need some of the men in the community to come out and be active and help us out. It won't take a lot of your time, but it'll be worth all of your time. And we look forward to that. Thank you very much. Good question. What, yes. uh, who's your target audience? It, it will be middle school, school age school. young men, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And you, and you guys will run the program on Saturdays? Yes, sir. Right now we're pretty set. On, on Saturdays we're going to finalize the time for that at our next meeting. Uh, our concern is to try to make sure we leave room for some sports activities that always take place. You know, football, basketball, and baseball, but each one is seasonal, so no one should uh, be robbed of the opportunity to participate if they so desire. They may not be able to do it during the football season, but it will be during the next season, the season after that. Our goal is to complete 50 young men per group, so we'll probably take 60 to 75 each time because there will be an attrition rate, and we're aware of that. But we want these young men to be built to succeed, and that is what we're going to do. Any other questions? Yes, yes where is the location of that meeting? The meeting will be at the Youth Activity League, right, just right across the right. block, right here. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. How long will the program run? The program will run 16 weeks. Okay. That's what we've come to is 16 weeks. And that will be at least three or four different components. We'll finalize that when we develop the full curriculum. And we also have started uh, some people to assemble basically an interview or a uh, a survey set of questions so that the prospective young men will have some input in the program as well. We don't want it to come from all an adult point of view. We want to incorporate what the young men think, what they think they need that would help them prepare for their future. We want to make sure we incorporate all of that in there as well as some parental input and some of the principal input as well. What, what time is the meeting? Meetings at uh, 6.30? 6.30, November 13th. Yes? Uh, how are we recruiting the youth? Yes, it will be middle school level. We have a, a target middle school for our first uh, launch, and that will be Roosevelt Middle School. And we will go strategically from each middle school. After that, each uh, time we run a new program, we'll go to a different school, and we'll put in a different group every time. Any other questions? Thank you very much for your time. And the point um, of starting at one middle school is to be able to really measure the impact and to really have it um, be more effective. And so when we have those group of young men together, they'll create their own kind of like learning community. And when they um, have the camaraderie and they'll be able to really um, spend time with one, one another and really create that brotherhood. And we think that they'll be able to impact change on their campus. And so we'll have, um, there's a software that um, we didn't speak about that we'll be utilizing to really um, screen the kids, see where they are um, in all aspects of academia. Um, we'll be looking at their report cards um, from day one, and so at the end of the module, we'll be able to see how their grades improved, what about their behavior, um, and we'll be able to target different um, benchmarks that we'll be looking to really see how effective this program model is. And so we'll start at one um, middle school, and then we'll be able to go to different um, campuses throughout the district. And so our goal is to be able to have it at every single um, middle school throughout um, the district. And the reason why we're focusing on middle school kids is because they're more impressionable. Um, once kids get to high school, they usually already developed um, a lot of their behaviors and we're not leaving them out. There already is a mentorship program for high schools already um, being implemented in the city of Compton. There is a adult mentorship program in Centennial High School. I understand that they are now in Dominguez and they're moving to Compton High School as well. And so 
we'll be um, connecting those dots with that program and incorporating them into the SEED program so that our middle school young men, once they complete our various um, stages of the program, they'll be ready to go into the high school mentorship program. And so that'll be a whole new set of curriculum. And so our goal is to be able to create a safety net and to provide that family and that um, support and the educational component that our kids need to succeed. And we're not just focusing on um, the, the physical discipline, but the physical component is really important because we know that for all of us that have started and stopped um, workout programs, we know that <laughs> when you complete a workout program, that just shows a different level of discipline to yourself. And when you're successful, it, it just really permeates to every area of your life. And so our kids, they need to understand what discipline is, how important discipline is to success. You cannot be successful without discipline. And it's a big shocker for a lot of our young men when they get out into society and they see how ill-equipped they are because we lacked, we, we dropped the ball in providing them with the necessary discipline that they needed. And so it is a, a big cornerstone of this program to make sure that they are not only physically tough, but mentally tough because everything starts in the mind. And we want to make sure that we build strong young men, young men that can articulate themselves, that are educated and that have high self-esteem. And so these are the, the building blocks of this program. And for the first module, we're specifically focusing on um, reading and public speaking because um, our young men are graduating from high school with third grade reading levels. And that is a travesty because we all know if you can't um, read and comprehend, it's just gonna be um, issues throughout your whole entire life in terms of really being successful in whatever career path, whether that's college or trades. And so we're making certain that they can read um, at an appropriate level and then also articulate in a manner that's respectable because when you can speak to a group of people, that um, really boosts your own self-esteem. And so we are interested in building leaders. Um, our men are really our future. And so we're focusing on um, the, the Big Brothers program to start with. And we're also starting a um, youth mentorship program for young ladies. And I'll talk more about that. Um, it's not necessarily out of this group, but um, we are having something for our young ladies as well. And we'll be starting for um, young ladies under the age of 18 to um, 18 to 35 and then even 35 to 45. So we're doing something for women in the community as well. And are there any additional questions? Okay. And then the next step is, by now we were hoping that people can um, really formulate um, their ideas and really attach themselves to a subcommittee group. And this time when we meet every month, we're really providing information. So I would like for our Sheriff's Department to provide um, stats on how many arrests in terms of um, prostitution or how many um, pimps or johns are arrested. If we can have our city attorney give um, legislative updates because we are continually providing um, new municipal codes to make our um, law enforcement more effective. And then if we can just hear from you community members what you are hearing in the streets, you know, what's going on. I, and I, I want to take a time to really hear from you all as well because we are all in the streets and we have different um, um, perspectives and we can really be more effective and help law enforcement be more effective as well. And then also for our education group, um, they have their meeting times. And if I can just have our two um, group leaders provide the times once more for everyone so that they can join those groups, that would be helpful. Yeah. You can come on up and provide those times again for anyone that missed it. Okay. October 30th is our next meeting, and they all fall on Wednesday. November 13th, November 25th, December 11th, and December 18th. 4 o'clock p.m. at the Compton Unified School District. And as I stated previously, if you give me your contact information, I will email you uh, the exact location. There's several um, boardrooms in the district office, so that way I can give you a specific location. For those of you uh, interested in meeting with us for the SEED program, that will be November the 13th. That is a Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. at the YAL, just across the way, 700 North Alameda. And if you give us your contact information, I'm right in the back. We can add you to our list. 
and uh, you can help us with the input for our mission statement, our vision statement, any ideas for the curriculum, and we'll do a lot of communicating by email before that date so that we maximize our hour together so that we get the most uh, out of our time. We value everyone's time and we appreciate your input. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to see, are there any uh, questions or comments? We have some um, new visitors. And I don't know if you have any feedback or if you have any questions because this is more, this is more of an update meeting. So I just want to hear from the people. <clears throat> the reports and the updates and one of the things that comes to my mind is, is our youth. Because, um, you know, right now in our church, um, I'm, I'm, you know, also envisioning our young people to, to uh, make an impact on, on other young people in their schools. And I have, I have, you know, young kids. My kids are still very young and they're still going to school. And, you know, they're growing up in the city and they see a lot, they hear a lot. And, uh, I mean, I've been blessed that I've been able to raise them up in the church all you know what I'm saying all their life, but you know, um I, I see the I see the toll that that's happening with our, our families that come into our church and how their their young people are are uh, you know, fourteen, fifteen years old and their mindsets are already gang related and you know, that lifestyle. So part of my vision in my church is to reach our young people and have them impact other young people and you know, Victory Outreach, we are a beautiful ministry that really goes into the inner cities and, and works the inner cities and, and helps people, you know, bring, come out of that lifestyle. And we also, you know, inspire them to, to be leaders, you know, to, to, uh, uh, to be leaders in their communities and turn around and make a, make a difference. So uh, also like, you know, with Satchel, the school, I mean, uh, there's something I would like to be part of. Uh, going into educating the young people, I was a I was a drug addict for for many years as a young person, and um, now that um now that I have what God has given me, I want to just give back. You know, I want to give back. I don't want to see people grow up the way I grew up. I got shot twice, you know, uh, near my deathbed, and um, and God allowed me to you know God allowed me to live. So now I just want to give back. I want to make a difference. Um, our part of our mission statement in Victory Outreach is that we work with those of mutual purpose, and that's you know the organization like the task force. So I'm available. I'm here, and um, you know whatever I can help. You know I just want to serve our community. Amen. In the last two years, we've been focusing focusing in on Whaley because that was one of those schools that was, had the most challenges in, within the city, and and we know that that the pimps and the gang leaders. We're targeting young people. You know, I come from the background of being a gang member and a drug addict myself, and I thank God for my pastor and Victory Hours that opened the doors for me and helped me make that change in my life. So now I have a group of young men, young adults that are helping me, you know, to do the work that I do now. I'm a chaplain within the city, also, you know, in, in, in the when I say within the city, not within the city, you know, city, but within the streets of the city of Compton, because we're out there in the streets. We have a group called Midnight Missionaries that we started off already, and. Uh, Last month, uh, we started off, we've been going out. Every other week, we're gonna be going out at 12, uh, from 10 to like 12, you know, at night, at night with soup. And we're out there looking for the drug, you know, the people that are on drugs, the people, we've been around the courthouse. There's like 20 people that live around the courthouse. Just at any given time, you go to the courthouse and we know them already. We know them by name, we've been ministering to them. We've been trying to get them off the streets into rehabilitation homes, into, into women's homes, men's homes. So, we're out there, and if anybody here wants to, like, you know, go with us, you're more than welcome to partner up with us, you know, go out there with a cup of soup and, you know, and just a, a message of inspiration to these people, you know. They're out there. I have a young man that was actually living at the courthouse uh, for about six months. He was, uh, he was kicked out of his uh, foster home, his foster home and, and, and he was out there, and I thank God for, I've seen the change in this man's life, you know. You know, we've, uh, we've seen a change in his life. He was living in front of the courthouse, now he's back in school, he's graduated in a month, he's gonna finish off of school. And, and I just see that God is doing something, but it's gonna take for us to get out of our comfort zone and go out in the night, go out at, at all times of the day in the night and reach out to people and you know, get out of our comfortable zone and, and put up ourselves, our finances, our time. And I think as men, that's what we need to do. Like as men, we need to come together and, 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 and go out there. You know, we, I've, been, I've been through some of the craziest alleys at, you know, I've been at home watching TV with my group, with the group of guys that stay with me. 
And I told them at 12 o'clock at night, you know what, let's go out into the streets right now. And they're like, what, right now? So we go out and we're walking these, these, these streets, you know, these alleys, they're dark. You know, we're out there with our flashlights and, you know, we're hoping to find people. We come into some abandoned homes and we've, we've gone into the yards and, and we see these guys right there smacked out, drugged up, you know, and, and when we come up to them, they allow us to pray for them, you know, they allow us to pray for them and, and, and we, we provide a recovery home. We have a recovery home. We're trying to open another one here in the city. You know, right now we have over 20 guys in recovery and we're trying to get another 20 guys into recovery. We want to have 40. That's our goal. Our goal is to reach the city, to reach the drug dealers. You know, because all these, all these drug addicts, they are drug addicts. They weren't drug addicts in the beginning. They were pimping. You know, they were, they were balling. They were slanging. They had money. But they, they've, they've got burnt out in their, in, their, in their career. And now they're on drugs. And so we need to reach them out. We need to reach these people. We need to reach these people because most of us have somebody that's, that's on drugs or in that situation in our family. I don't know about you, but, you know, we all, so, and somehow, someone in our family is on drugs. So we need, to, we need to get out there and reach these people, man. There's a lot of young, young people out there that need to hear uh, a message of hope. And um, I, we're doing it there at Victory Outreach. And, and I thank God for my pastor because he opened the door for me when I, when I came out of prison. You know, somebody, he gave me a chance. And, and, and I, thank, I thank God for him. And I just think that, that we should do that. We should, you know, if you guys want to partner up with us, you know, we go out on, thir on, on Thursday nights. We go out to the streets of Long Beach Boulevard. We go, we're, right now we're... We're planning, uh, we have this big map and with the different gangs and we're trying to, t you know, we're, we're targeting different gangs and we're trying to go out there and minister to them with a message of hope. So if you guys want to partner up with us, with us on Thursday nights, you're more than welcome. And we, we go out at five, you know, we go out at five and, you know, we go out and put music and, you know, we try to reach the community. So if you guys want to partner up with us, give us a call, you know, if you ask for my number before you leave from here. And I just want to share that, I'm sorry. Could you, <laughs> could you share your phone number? Okay, I'll give you my phone number. I mean, there's, there's, like I said, there's a lot of opportunities, you know, a lot of times that we go out. So my number is 323-383-5012. My name is Eddie. So we I'll come here um, every month and do the work and, you know, you spend your time and bring your resources and are dedicated um, really just to the mission of why we're here, which is to restore our city. And so I thank you all for your partnership, your commitment, your time and for really um, bringing your hearts to, you know, really reach our children. And I think that's why we're all here. And I just have um, a few requests. We have our needs list. So just to recap, for our young men's program, we really need men to come and mentor our kids. And we want men that can share what they've been through, you know, where, where they've gone and, you know, where they're actually going because it's one thing to tell someone what they shouldn't do, but you have to show someone what they should do. And that's one thing that I always encounter with working with children. Parents usually never ever tell um, their kids what they went through. And so um, in Revelations 12 and 11 it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the power of the testimony. And so we know that, you know, the blood is already, the blood works, the blood works. And so it is the power of the testimony. That, that's the equation right there. So we have to be able to share our story with our kids. When I meet with my young ladies, I tell them the, the do's that I, did, that I did and that they should not do. And I tell them why and how. And so it's the same thing with our young men. We need men of valor to stand up and to take back their own communities. Because I believe that in order for our community to change, the men have to stand up. And I am a proponent of men standing up in their families to really take back these streets because if the men weren't out there prostituting our young ladies, we wouldn't have this behavior out there. And while there may be a couple of women out there, you know, pimping, that's a, a true minority. And so I'm asking for all the men to stand up and to be able to mentor some kids. And so, and even um, this will probably be played on Channel 36 and we'll post it on the internet. But, you know, nothing grieves me more when I have men commenting on Facebook about what we need to do. When I tell them that you need to go outside your house and go see every every young man you see on your street, if you go mentor them, we wouldn't be in the predicament that we're in. So I'm asking all the men, again, to stand up and to join this mentorship program because I would love if we had one man for every young man. And that's not a, too much to ask. When we have 40 kids or 50 young men, we should be able to have 50 men. And that, that's not too much. So if you know some upstanding men, some men that have been through, that have come out, please connect them with the Big Brothers program because we need proof 
that they can come out of what, what they are in right now and also something that they can aspire to reach. And there are a lot of great men in the community and they just need to know, you know, how they can contribute and how they can participate. And so this is a great vehicle. So again, if you know any men, please connect them with our Big Brothers program. And um, with the uniforms, if you know businesses that want to uh, partner with us, let us know. But we'll be, I'll be personally reaching out to make certain that our kids get the uniforms that they need for the physical agility and then also for the blazers and their um, attire because we want to teach them you know, how they should dress so that they can understand what it is to be upstanding and to have self-esteem. So that's something that we'll be making sure we take care of. And I thank you all for your time and I look forward to seeing you all next month. And we'll, um, next, the next meeting we'll go over, um, we'll have some reports from our various committees on what they're doing and then we'll also make certain that we have some updates statistically on where we are with prostitution, where we are with our crime rate, um, arrest, homicides, and all those things so that we can um, really be on one page on where we are um, and how effective that we're being. And again, if you can just reach out to your neighbors, if people are complaining to you about crime, tell them to call the Sheriff's Department. If, if you see a crime or someone sees a crime, please report it. And I just want to say briefly that um, our Sheriff's Department, we have had several, um, well, a couple of incidents that were reported widespread in the media, but those suspects were actually apprehended. And so we're happy that our sheriffs are here, they're working hard, and they're um, really making certain that we're keeping our city safe. And that's the, the part of the story that the media never reports out. So Compton is definitely getting better. And so I thank you guys for your time. I'll see you next month.